Okay, so uh, next topic is uh, quite useful in everyday life, We're trying to find the unit rates and prices. A unit rate is pretty much um, uh, the rate or cost for one item. Sometimes you might go to a store and you might see buy 12 candies for 95 cents. Um, you want to know how much one candy would cost. So it's also always handy to figure out what is the price or rate for one. And when comparing prices or rates in everyday life, um, like I said, it's useful to convert these numbers into a rate for one or a unit rate. Once you've done that, then you can compare the rates. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say Doug. Doug delivers 150 newspapers in two hours. Mary delivers 200 newspapers in two and a half hours. Who is faster at delivering newspapers? Okay, now you can have your guesses here just by looking at the numbers, but honestly you can't really make a, um, a fair 100% true prediction because a couple things are different here. They're delivering different amounts of papers and they're doing it in different amount of time. So to make a fair comparison, we have to figure out how much are they, is each person delivering in one hour? How much is he delivering in one hour? How much is she delivering in one hour? And then once we have the same amount of hours look, where to look at, we can make an easy um, choice of who is delivering the papers quicker. So like I said, it's hard to compare when you have different numbers of papers in different times what we need to do is find the delivery rate for one hour. Remember, the rate for one is the same thing as the unit rate. Whatever phrase that, you, that works for you. So we need to find the rate for one hour or the unit rate for one hour. And it's very simple. We, what we're going to do is find out how many papers Doug delivers in two hours or how many papers he delivers per hour. So we're looking for papers per hour. So to get papers per hour, it's 150 papers per for two hours that Doug is delivering. Compare that answer to Mary's 200 papers in two and a half hours. So Mary delivers 200 papers in 2.5 hours. So it's just a simple matter of using your calculator, which you're allowed to do, remember? And you just go 150 divided by 2, this is for Doug, and you get 75. The units are important, it's papers per hour. You can abbreviate hour like that. And then for Mary, let's see what she gets. She ends up getting 200 papers in 2.5 hours, and that's 80. She delivers 80 papers per hour, and so obviously Mary delivers more. She's able to deliver 80 papers per hour. She's the faster deliverer. Not by much, but it's pretty pretty close. Okay. This this is a question that I come across pretty much every weekend. Uh, I go grocery shopping. Let's say at a store, they advertise that there are five apples costing $1.50. What would you have to pay for eight apples? Same thing. If we knew how much one apple costs, well, then we'd no problem. But we don't right away. We have to figure out what is the cost per apple. Now, to give you a little hint here, whenever, like I said here, find the cost for one apple. Whenever you're, you're dealing with money and these rate cost questions, you want to figure out how much money it costs per item. In this case, dollars per apple. So it's always, I, I, I don't want to use a formula here, but I guess you could always say it's money per item. In this case, it's dollars per apple. It's like the kind of sort of formula you could use for these questions. Okay, so um, what is the cost for one apple? Well, again, the money. $1.50 per five apples. And when you divide that, $1.50, I know a lot of you can do it in your head, but anyways, $1.50 divided by 
divided by 5, you get this. Now it's money. Remember money, we always go to the second decimal place. So 0 0.3, there's nothing after it, but you got to put a 0. So it's that, which you read as 30 cents. 30 cents per apple. That's what it costs for one apple. Well, now that we know what it costs for one apple, what would it cost for eight? Well, all you got to do is times this by your eight. Eight apples times the cost for one apple, or the unit rate for one apple, and eight times that. My number is already there, so I can go 0 0.30 times eight, and I get 2.4. Now, again, this is money terms. Don't leave it as 2.4. Money always goes to the second decimal place. You never see 2.4 dollars. It's two dollars and forty cents would be the cost for eight apples. All right, moving along. Which is a better deal? Prove it with calculations. Six shirts for $24.99 or nine shirts for $37.99? You can make your guesses. The way to actually figure this out is again, we need to know what is the cost for one shirt. Once we've figured out what the cost for one shirt is, on a per shirt basis, we can figure out what the better deal is. So like I said, always go, when you're dealing with the money, the money divided by the item, which in this case is a shirt. So there's six shirts. It's money divided by shirts. And over here, the same thing for store B. 37.99 divided by the nine shirts to get the rate for one shirt. 24.99 divided by six. So let's do that. Uh, 24.99 divided by six you get this. Now again we're talking money so we have to go to the second decimal place 4.165. We want to go to the second decimal place that's a 5 which means it's going to force this number to round up to $4.17. That is the cost, I shouldn't circle that yet, that is the cost per shirt. Okay, let's see if store B can beat that. $37.99 divided by 9. 37.99 divided by 9. You get this huge thing, which we only want to go to the second decimal place. We have 4.22, which is $4.22. Now we can make the comparison of which is a better deal. Obviously, this is more expensive, so this is the better deal. It's cheaper. Go to store A. Assuming that the shirts are exactly the same, identical. Okay, so that's unit rates. Andy, for when you go shopping and looking for those good deals, especially like on Boxing Day and stuff like that. Here's a school testing question. Um, and it has to do with our cafeteria. Let's say on Monday, the calf sells nine french fries every two minutes. On Wednesday, they sell 21 french fries every five minutes. My question to you is, and I need proof, is on which day do they sell more fries? Prove this with calculations, just like I did above. I'll call them calcs for short. That's part A, and then for part B, since lunch is 30 minutes, how many fries will they probably sell on Monday? So take your inf information from Monday, extend that to the full 30 minute lunch hour, and see what you get. That is it. Good luck with all that. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.